Thank you very much, Dr. Chakravarti. That's a very enlightening, educative uh, on your sharing your thoughts and insights into the financial position. On the face of it, frankly speaking, the apprehension of the financial health of the states does not seem good for someone who's uh, you know, just looking at, at a macro point of view without getting to the details. But uh, I agree that you can do borrowing. The good thing is the tax inflows are going up for the government. <clears throat> so I think that's also sharing the money across the board. That's a good thing. But I think fiscal management is something crucial, whether it's a state, whether it's a country, or whether it's a company. So I think, you know, there's something which has to be looked at all the time. Thank you very much, indeed, for a very interesting observation. Anyone has any questions or queries on this? If there's anything on that. I just have one question, uh, if you're okay, Chairman, if I can ask. Please. Um, uh, uh, Madam Chakrabarti, just one question is you quite mentioned on the climate financing and the climate budgeting for the states. And we've seen that that one area where we possibly the states in India, specifically certain states that we repeatedly see, uh, obviously the financial management goes awry with any climate change uh, disaster that happens. What, from your reading of the situation, uh, do you believe that this is something that the states would pick up? Do you see any deterrent to it? Do you believe as a public policy committee here, is there something we can do um, to actually talk to some of the, you know, the, the state governments um, and parliamentarians on this? I'm just, uh, you know, I'm looking at it more from a financial drain if we do not obviously look at climate and the, and the, and the Thing that follows it, we're all seeing it in almost every state now, and not just that, but also the fact that the agriculture produces the seasons and everything is off. So, I'm just curious on it. Um, uh, also, from a HL standpoint, it's very important for us. So, um, I just was curious if you have any thoughts to share. Thank you, Chairman. Can I take the question now? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Rajana Ji, for asking me the question. You know. Uh, it, it's very crucial to look into the climate responsive budgeting because you know that gives a kind of transparency on how much you know we are spending for the adaptation because we identified some eight components as a part of you know uh, this exercise when we have done for the first national adaptation communication a few years back you know NI50 we have worked with the uh, you know, Ministry of Environment and come up with the, uh, you know, country's first national adaptation communication backed by the budget estimates. Such exercise, you know, the state governments equally need to give emphasis uh, because, you know, that's very crucial to know that which sectors and how much, you know, the country is spending on the adaptation. That's very crucial. And second question, you know, as you rightly pointed out, uh, you know, we have to do the transition. Overnight towards non fossil fuel is not easy when it comes to the, of course, it's not a question of energy intensity, but it's a question of energy poverty. The states will not be able to do that uh, transition towards non fossil fuel and the commitment towards decarbonization overnight because there is an issue related to energy poverty over there. And the question is that, of course, uh, when compared to you know other statistics, the indoor air pollution and the need for you know energy infrastructure to be you know that cleansing process needs to be happened there from the livelihood crisis helping up mechanism so if we look into that energy poverty issues you know this energy transition overnight to non-fossil fuel is not easy here you know we need to do a sectoral analysis and mining sector i think it's very important to be looked into uh, because it's a non-tax revenue when we talked about augmenting the state exchequer through the taxation and the non-taxation sources of revenue, within the non-tax sources, the mining royalty regime, that's its little onerous. And of course, we have moved ahead from the unit of the protection towards, you know, getting it linked towards the ad valor of taxation. So, you know, we need to take a call on how do you want to do it related to the mining taxation. So, uh, you know, there are questions needs to be looked into from the sectoral aspects, but I do believe that the climate change commitments that needs to be given emphasis the moment we talk about the state finances from the expenditure side. And on the expenditure side, we are arguing for the uh, climate responsive budgeting and the 
revenue side, we are arguing for the non-tax revenue, the kind of augmenting, the way in which it's augmenting the state exchequer. Because there are provisions in the uh, you know, royalty regime, there are multiplicity of taxes, which is affecting the competitiveness of the industry sector. So how do you want to do it? The moment we talk about uh, carbon taxation, is there any multiplicity of taxes that's affecting the competitiveness of the sector, then we won't be able to augment the revenue. So these questions relate to the taxation and the expenditure side needs to be given emphasis along with the ecological fiscal transfers, which is going to be given emphasis by the 16th Finance Commission. And as an institution, we have to articulate these two, the 16th Finance Commission as well, because you know this ecological fiscal transfer by incorporating a climate change criteria retaining it with a huge weightage within the fiscal transfer so the finance commission transfers where they design the tax code that is also equally relevant so i do agree with the point that we need to take it up in a much more serious manner yeah thank you thank you if i may if i may uh, uh, dr chakra just Ask was come in the papers in the last couple of days that Himachal Pradesh has had a problem in making some payments, so they said that the Himachal Pradesh Bhavan in Delhi should be sold. Oh, what was that? What is the background of this? I mean, you know, how, how, that doesn't show a healthy state financial position. Uh, uh, may I not answer your question? Uh, because I don't have any specific knowledge related to that, uh, but you know, uh, yeah, uh, maybe we'll do that one to one later. Okay, okay. Okay, but thank you. Actually, Supreme Court, uh, that's a, a local court has decided. I know, I know, I know. What's it mean? Something it gave us quite a shock, you know. <laughs> yeah, two cases are there. One is uh, the Rajasthan related. Okay. Uh, the other one is uh, the Himachal. Okay. Anyhow. I think, thank, thank you so much, Dr. Chakravarti, for your presentation and for sharing the situation. I think it's very educative for all of us. And this is something which is also on our agenda to take up on the Public Policy Council with various uh, sectors of people in the government, whether it's MPs, state, centre, ministers, etc., etc., so that we want to continue pushing on these two things very actively, plus others which have been suggested today. We'll bring that also onto the agenda. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's the end of our meeting today. Thank you so much for joining, coming in and sharing your thoughts, participating in the meeting and look forward to your inputs all the time. We can have the next meeting, maybe another three, four months time. We'll work out. I think that things progress a little bit. We'd be happy to have another discussion because getting your inputs and views helps CII decide, decide how to move forward. So that's a great help. So uh, thank you very much, everybody for participating in the meeting today. Really appreciate that. Thank, thank you, Shana. Thank, 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 thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.